Hello, friends. Good to be with you again today. As we begin today, we'll be looking at the Gospel of St. Matthew and the 20th chapter, if you want to get that ready. But before we look at that, I, I come today with a, a saddened heart, but a joyous heart. As one of our dear friends at the Smith Ferry United Methodist Church went on to the glories of God's kingdom this Friday afternoon, Joe Schondemeyer has inherited God's kingdom, and we need to remember his family and his friends and his church as we enter into this time of prayer. Our Lord God, we do thank you for being our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings. And Lord, we do thank you for our friend Joe. We thank you that he had the promise of the resurrection, that he realized that he was not made to be here forever, but he was made to enter into your kingdom. We thank you that you have welcomed Joe into your kingdom, but we pray that your grace, peace, love, and comfort would be upon his wife and upon his children and all those that love him. And now, Lord, as we gather to break your word and to share together, we pray that you would anoint us with your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Well, as we begin to look at chapter 20 of the Gospel of St. Matthew, let us hear the word of the Lord, beginning at verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual day's wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. Notice the switch. I'll pay you whatever is right, where at the first ones, they agreed to the daily wage. And so they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. Of course they would think that. Here's the ones that only work for an hour. And now the ones who are called first had worked 12 hours. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour. You have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. And may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word today. As we look at this passage today, is it grace or justice? As we look at our Christian faith, we normally think of it as grace and justice. Not or, but both. Because throughout the Bible, these are pretty much always part of God's terms, part of God's attributes. God is truly the embodiment of grace and of justice. It's hard to find a situation in which one is more important than the other. 
But yet, in his parable today, Jesus does just that. In his parable of the vineyard, with the landowner and the laborers, the landowner, we reflect to be Jesus. The laborers could be each of us. When we think about the times that this parable was taught, the day laborers would pretty much be ready in the marketplace. They needed work. They needed a job. And they would wait for somebody to come in to hire them. And depending on which viewpoint you look at, some might consider these laborers, these workers, to have been tax collectors or some other religious outcast. Another take would be that the first laborers that were chosen were the Jewish Christians. And the last of the laborers would be the Gentiles who were just coming into God's church. I really look at it as the way of the last viewpoint of the Jewish Christians being the first and the Gentiles representing the last laborer that was called. In this passage today, it kind of reflects an unusual situation where the landowner is going out to hire his own workers. Normally, the landowner does not take on that task. Back in those days, that just would have been a very, very rare situation. Then it would have been a manager uh, of the field, of the vineyards, that would be doing just that. And we hear that coming upon the manager in verse 8 of making the payment. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. He delegated that duty to the manager, which normally he would have delegated the duty of the hiring to the manager as well. And so indeed, that was an unusual situation. And as far as the payment that's reflected there in verse 8 of them being called to be paid, it indeed was a normal thing to be paid at the end of the working day because uh, the day's labor would begin very early in the morning and go into the early evening from sun up to sundown, pretty much. If you look at Psalm 104 and verse 22 and 23, we hear these words, when the sun rises, they, which were the lions mentioned in the previous verses in Psalms, withdrew and lie in their dens. People go out to work and to labor until the evening. And as we look at the landowner, he is never standing idle. Especially in this passage today, the landowner is active throughout this whole passage. And he works diligently to, to find laborers to work in his vineyard. And as he does, he hires them. We know that the workers could go to work whenever they are called. Some are called 12 hours, some nine, some six. Down to, down to the one hour, one that was called. Just as God calls us at different times in our life, some have been very blessed to be called as, as youngsters. Others, maybe a little later in age, but yet we still have been called. And we still receive the same reward in getting the blessings of heaven to await us. The divine vineyard requires laborers, it requires workers. God requires workers here on earth today and here and now. He wants us to be laborers, not people that just loiter around, taking it easy and doing nothing. Indeed, we, we may be saved as we're called to be laborers for one of those sins of Sodom. 
You remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, but back in Sodom, one of the sins they committed was idleness, which indeed is a forerunner of eternal and everlasting ruin when we are idle. We need to stay active. We need to stay active in our faith. We reinvent the ways we're active sometimes because as we age and sometimes as our bodies physically can't do what they used to do, we find other ways to labor for the Lord. And the Lord always opens up a new avenue for us as we're willing to listen to him. Today, as we look at the workers, we see that they were, they were first workers were found early in the morning, about six o'clock. And they agreed on a contracted wage for the day. Let's put it in today's terms, and this would be a very minimal wage but for a whole day, especially for 12 hours. Let's say they were paid $50. And they agreed to that. They agreed that their labors would be worth $50. And so they went out to go to work, not thinking that others might be called later but knowing that they were going to make that amount of money. Then we see some more laborers that are called, some more workers down at the marketplace that were hired around 9 o'clock. So three hours later, some more workers were found. Those workers seemed to be idle in the market. And this time they agreed to a fair wage. And that could be any amount, pretty much, is determined by the landover owner, which is Jesus. And again, this occurs at noon, and again, later on at 3 o'clock. Then comes 5 o'clock, only an hour before quitting time. And yet another group of laborers are called to go to work. Now they were questioned. Question, why are you just standing around here? Why have you not found a job yet? Well, that sometimes is our response as we see people just standing around doing nothing. Why aren't you busy working? Why don't you pitch in and help out? Why are you watching everybody else go to work while you sit around? In this context, maybe they just couldn't find a job. Maybe they were lazy. Or maybe they were really desperate to find work and they, they kept trying, but they had no fortune. Well, we see the call in our passage of all those different workers, just as we see the call of different workers in our church today. Then we look at the payment. So we see the laborers or the workers. Then we see the payment that is rendered. And when it was time for payment, uh, Landowner called the manager to disperse the payments, starting with the last and going to the first. Now, Jewish law required that a labor should be paid on the evening of the same day that was work, so that the poor would not go hungry. And we read about this in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. You shall not withhold the wages of poor and needy laborers, whether, other, whether Israelites or aliens who reside in one of your towns. You shall pay them their wages daily before sunset, because they are poor and their livelihood depends on them. Otherwise, they might cry unto the Lord against you, and you would incur guilt. We also hear in Leviticus 19, and verse 13, you shall not defraud your neighbor, you shall not steal, you shall not keep yourself the wages of labor until morning. And so the payment was going to be required that evening, and that amount of payment will be determined by the landowner. And as the payment is determined, we, we see the response of the workers or the laborers. We hear it, uh, the early ones, the first ones that were there, and probably the ones that arrived at nine o'clock, and, and maybe the ones at noon and three grumbled along. They thought it was unfair. 
that it just wasn't right that everybody is going to be paid the same amount for working a different amount of hours. But yet here it was. They all were going to receive the same wage, whether it was $50 or whatever was determined by the employer. The last hire only worked for an hour, but yet was going to get the same pay. Yeah, reasonably, a lot of folks say that's just not right. It's indeed is going to raise some eyebrows along the way. Was the owner being unjust? The first workers again agreed upon their wages. When they were offered a job for a certain amount of pay, they said yes. They didn't quibble. They didn't try to negotiate, but they said yes. In our passage, it's truly not a question of justice but it's a reflection at a generosity of the landowner. Now that one, or that one group of laborers that began at the 11th hour of work, only one more hour to go to get to 12 full hours of work done for those who began early. But here, those that began at five o'clock they received more than they could ever, ever have hoped for. That was grace on the landowner's part. Now, was the owner generous or the laborers jealous? Well, I think it was pretty much both. The owner indeed was generous. And yes, the laborers are jealous. That happens a lot of times in life, does it not? Do we look at what others make and we just don't think it's right? We become jealous. But we need to be appreciative of what we do receive ourselves. As we look at the landowner, again, we reflect upon him to be Jesus himself. He is the term, the one who determines what is just. It's not up to us to determine what is just. It's not up to us to decide who gets what from God. The laborers are promised just pay, fair pay. We as his laborers here on earth are all promised a fair pay no matter when we begin in service. Jesus retains the right to do what he wills with his own affairs, just as the landowner retained that right. It's not our place to, to question his choice of what rewards the laborers will get. It is up to him With the laborers in our text, he promised whatever is right is what you will receive, whatever is fair. He retained to himself to exercise goodness and grace through generosity. Sovereignty will not be exercised at the cost of justice or grace. In serving God, we're blessed to be of service to him. We're blessed to be called in the service. Our service is based not on thinking, how much am I going to get paid? But knowing that God is going to take care of you. Hasn't God always taken care of you? Hasn't he always watched over you? We can reflect back to some of the places we were in life and wondered how we were going to get through that. But God always helped you, didn't he? 
You believed he would, but sometimes we still get scared that we're just not going to make it. Just remember, God loves you. You're his children, and he indeed will take care of you. God's grace is absolute, and his grace is sure. Everything else will pale in comparison. Grace or justice? Today, are you trusting God's grace? I pray that each of us are trusting his grace, that we've received him as our Savior and our Redeemer. Let us close this time with a word of prayer. Our Almighty God, we do thank you that even if we begin serving you when we're 10, when we're 20, when we're 50, even when we're 80, we're older, that we all have a reward awaiting us, that you're always going to take care of us, no matter how many years of service that we're called to be engaged in, whether we're called as youngsters, middle-aged, or a bit older. Yet we are called, and we thank you for that. And we ask, Lord, your hand would rest upon each one today. Rest upon those who need your grace. Rest upon those who need your healing hand. Be with those who need encouragement. Be with those who are trying to find their way to you. Just watch over and keep us all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And may God's grace, hope, and love be with you. Until we meet again. Amen.